Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. I am about six weeks late, but happy 2022, everybody. I hope you have been able to uh, weather through this wild ride that has been the start of the trading year. I don't know about you, but January was um, really interesting, really, really interesting. I was not expecting, you know, this correction or whatever you want to call it to happen. I don't think anybody was, um, but I feel like with some caveats that we might sort of be through the worst of it, um, but we will see next month when and if the Fed well, not if, because they said that they're going to. So when the Fed decides to raise interest rates, the next question will be by how much? Is it going to be by 0.25 or 0.5 basis points? I don't really know. Um, CPI data came out today. Inflation is not looking super great. I'm not an analyst in that regard, so I'm not going to go much further than sort of the basic news headlines. But all that to say is that um, it's been a really interesting start to the year. Um, so I haven't done a trade demonstration video in a while, and I figured that I would do one of those for you now. I have not been trading in the Tiffany Trades Options demo account very much. There's no activity in 2022. This is the carryover journal from 2021, and this is the Twitter position that I had put on. I didn't record this position, um, the last trade video I did a, a short or a cash cured put in United Airlines, that was in September or October or so, and, and so I had put on this Twitter position, gosh, obviously sometime after the last trade that I did, and it has not gone well, which I think perhaps many of you might have experienced this with. I have a lot of options right now in tech and sometimes not even in tech, but just a lot of the um, positions that I have on now have basically taken a beating. I have a lot of really um, deep in the money short puts that I have rolled out in time to avoid an early assignment. Um, that's something that I, I do pretty regularly when I'm not ready to take assignment of the stock. Um, in all instances, I would be Happy to take assignment. That's why I only trade options in stocks that I have no problem owning at any point. But if I can avoid it, I would be happy to do that as well. Um, I try to avoid early assignment as much as possible. So this is a Twitter position that I put on in, in Q4 2021. And Twitter had earnings and it basically did what the rest of the tech, industry, the tech sector did and just kind of blew through my short put. And so I rolled it out to February 18th, which is next week, and I just wanted to forget about it. Well, this morning, Twitter reported its earnings for Q4 2021 and then um, guidance for the following, the upcoming year. And it doesn't seem like it had that big of a move. I It's been kind of hovering in this $30 range for a while. And so I'm going to roll this position out. But before I do that, I wanted to highlight why I'm going to roll it out. Expiration is next Friday, the 18th, which is eight days away. And right now, the extrinsic value of this trade is showing only $1. And if I left this position on, there's a high likelihood that the option buyer on the other side of the transaction would exercise early so that in that case that means that I would be obligated to buy 100 shares of Twitter at the 60 strike which is something that I knew coming into the trade that that was a possibility but I don't really want to own Twitter at 60 right now it's a possible it's possible that it might increase in price over the, the coming weeks but I don't really know that either so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this position out for credit where I can to do that in Tastyworks you simply select the the option that you have and it'll give you the option to close close for profit roll group positions doesn't apply here since there's only a single leg option and I'm gonna roll it out if you wanted to see what expirations were available to you you can come to this table tab right here and you can 
select one of these drop downs and scroll out to see what expirations are coming up. Because I think that Twitter is going to need some more time to recover and I'm not likely to get a very good credit by rolling down and out. It's going to take me, it would make me go out to like January, which I don't want to do. I'm going to leave Twitter at 60. And this is something that I wouldn't normally do in options that are doing well or have um, the potential to recover in sort of the short term or if they aren't so super deep in the money like this one is. I wouldn't necessarily always roll it out 99 days, but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give Twitter an opportunity to recover, but I'm also trying to avoid early assignment. And you can see right now that the credit isn't all that great. It's only three cents to go out to May, 20 cents to go out to June. And that's natural. That's to be expected. The, the option is so deep in the money right now that the extra time value isn't really factoring into this right now. Most of what you're seeing is the intrinsic value, which is basically the difference between the strike price and where the option is currently trading. And right now that intrinsic value is quite high. You can see that between these two strikes that they're roughly trading in the same uh, bid and ask range, which is another indicator that there's not a lot of time premium attached to this June expiration. Same thing with May, pretty, pretty similar uh, bid and ask spreads as well. But in any event, I'm going to roll this out to May, which is 99 days away. And then I'm going to sell a call on it. And I'm going to show you the thought process that I go through when deciding when, how, and why to sell calls against my short puts. So that was a very quick fill, which is great. On the activity, I got 15 cents additional credit for this. 15 cents or $15 minus the fees is $13.72. This is the trade journal. I'm going to log this here. And it's been many, many weeks since I've traded in here. So I'm going to delete all of this, all of these cells that I don't use. So the total amount of credit that I've collected on Twitter since I opened the position is $378.83. If I was assigned Twitter at the 60 strike, that would mean $6,000 would be debited from my account. But one way that I like to track some of my um, my cost basis, as well as sort of figuring out where my break evens are and what I'd be happy to do if I needed to part with Twitter at any point later after assignment, is I'll take um, $6,000 and I will subtract the amount of credit that I've collected on the position for the lifetime that I've had it. So in this case, I'll take $6,000 minus 378.83. And that sum is $5,621.17. And what this means basically is that if or when Twitter gets above $56.21, that would be where my break even for the trade is. I would be happy to part with Twitter, assuming it was assigned to me at any price above $56. Obviously, the higher the better. Another way that you can reduce your uh, cost basis on any position is by selling calls. What I have been doing in scenarios where I have deep in the money puts and I'm just waiting for them to recover is I have been selling short calls against those positions because I, for purposes of my trading, I am going to assume that I'm going to be assigned at some point, in which case I'm treating it as a synthetic long. So since Twitter has already reported, I don't have to worry about earnings anymore. Hopefully at some point in the next few weeks, it'll have a run up. I'm going to look at the Twitter options chain right now. The uh, IV rank is 38 and that will probably continue to decrease a little bit if uh, there's no uh, major price movement in any direction on Twitter. The purpose of selling a call against my in the money short put is to further bring down my cost basis or break even. In this case, I'm more often selling short calls closer in expiration. So for the inverse is when I'm typically opening up short positions, uh, short put spreads, short puts, or just short, short iron condors, 
I am often selecting expirations that are 30 to 60 days away, uh, choosing a probability of profit that's about 65% or greater. Um, in that case, that just means that the delta would be um, 35 or less. For the case of short calls, my strategy has been to sell them anywhere between 7 and 14 days away at a probability of profit that is about 80% or greater. And this is because I want to guard against the possibility that the market itself is going to get its act together and um, kind of shake off all this inflation, Fed rate hike, you know, supply chain issues, stuff, shake it off and then move on and we'll all get back to business as usual. This lets me manage any short call positions uh, much easier than if they were, you know, 30 or 60 days away. Uh, and by that, I mean, I will typically roll it up and out or close it or flip it into a short put if I have the buying power to do that and, and the interest in doing that. It really just depends on the ticker symbol, the price action and what's happening in the market as a whole. So for Twitter, I'm going to look at something that is 15 days away. So that's about two weeks. Um, factoring in the weekend time premium. And I'm going to also look at the charts. So this is the Twitter chart on a 180 day range. And you can see sort of the progressive down move that it's had over the last several months. And this is about when I initially sold the 60 put. This is the earnings that it had or it dumped and then has been slowly declining ever since. So it looks like this range of 32 to about 38 is probably where it's going to settle for the next few weeks. Top of that range looks to be about 41 or so, 40, 41, give or take. So in the Tastyworks website, version of the platform it's showing that a 41 strike um, bid and ask for twitter is 63 to 72 cents and if i went to a 40 strike it's between 92 and 100 if i go to 42 strike it's only 50 cents which is the midpoint it increases my probability of profit up to 83 percent if i chose the 41 it's about 79 percent given that twitter has not had a significant run-up following earnings. I am more comfortable selling at the 78-79% probability of profit and letting theta or, or uh, time decay work in my favor. The idea of collecting almost $100 on this sounds appealing, but that's you know less than $2 away from the current trading price. So I'm going to actually select the 41 call. I will settle on a 78% probability of profit, hopefully collect 70 cents or $70 or so after fees. Um, and I'm going to add that to my position. And so I just sold a short call on Twitter expiring February 25th at the 41 strike. It has increased my buying power just a little bit. It was, I think, before we did this, which you can go back on the video, it was about like 2,900 or so. Um, Tastyworks is effectively treating this as a strangle, which is um, a short call and a short put, or a call and a put, depending on whether you're a buyer or seller, on a single position. In this case, the, they are in different expirations, but for purposes of buying power management, it is being treated as a strangle. So I collected 72 cents or $72 because it is a single leg. I'm only deducting $1.14 in fees. So I collected $70.86. You can log these together or separately. What I tend to do in most of my tracking is sort of use a color scheme to differentiate between calls and puts. I use yellow for puts and blue for calls, but there's no prescribed rhyme or reason. It's just the colors that I selected. 
So now the total amount of credit I've collected on the position is $449.69. If Twitter breached my short call, I would roll it up and out until I am in a position where it either has a pullback or I could close for some amount of profit on the credit that I've collected for the call side only. I sort of treat them separately in terms of credit management and how I'm going to um, open and close them and, and manage them for purposes of account tracking. Um, the ideal scenario is that I can just close this sometime by the end of next week for about 50% profit or more, or I can just continue to roll roll it or roll it up for credit or roll it down for credit, depending on what the price action is doing. I still have $3,317.51 in buying power. I have $6,359.71 in cash in the account. So I am I am guarded against early assignment on this position. Don't think it'll happen given that May is quite a ways away. But if it does, like I said, I'd be fine with it. One thing that I wanted to point out for purposes of this trade demonstration is that this is a strategy that I think inherently requires a certain degree of risk tolerance to the upside. Um, in the market before 2021 or even post-March 2020, I didn't really do this strategy very frequently because I felt at the time that every time that I sold calls of any kind, they always got breached or um, busted in a way that they were irreparable and I couldn't really continue to roll them up and out or up out and wider for more credit because the market just was relentlessly upward. I don't feel like that is the type of market that we are currently trading in now. I feel like this market is done is going to be much more up and down than it has been in the past. I feel like we started to see that maybe around February or March of 2021 and every few months um, a nice reminder of that sort of market momentum go up, have a couple of good good week, weeks or good months, and then we'd have a pullback. And so now I am selling many more short calls against my short put positions. And it's been working. And, and I will continue to do that until it doesn't work anymore. And that's the, the key thing I wanted to highlight is that this requires some adaptation to your normal trading strategies. If you're looking for ways to generate additional income into your account, without sort of overextending your risk or uh, overextending your buying power, you can make use of your current positions in a way that will continue to work for you. So this is just one way that you can do that. But you have to be prepared for the possibility that maybe tomorrow or after Jay Powell announces whatever rate hike he's going to make uh, with the rest of the Fed that the market might have a melt up. And, and if Twitter does, for some reason, exceed this 41 call in a way that um, sort of doesn't make sense to keep trying to roll it up and out, then, you know, I would face the reality and take the loss if I have to. Or if I felt like I was really comfortable with the idea of Twitter at whatever price point it moved to, I could flip the call to a put. It just depends, but the the whole point that I'm trying to make is to be flexible and adaptable in your trading plans and to sort of revisit your style and strategy based on market conditions and obviously continue to do what works for you. But don't do this if you don't have the risk tolerance to withstand potential up moves if and when they do happen. If you have any questions about this trade demonstration, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Send me an email, tiffanytradesoptions at gmail.com. Um, uh, I'm on Instagram at tiffanytradesoptions. I'm, I'm on Twitter as well, but I, I'm a really bad Twitter user, so don't expect a lot from me there. Um, but I'm available if you have any questions. So that's it. That's the video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you, as always, for watching, and let me know if you have any questions. Bye.